Hey guys, welcome to another unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at two Marushan revolvers. They're both gas powered, shell fed, and they're very similar, so I thought I'd group them together. Let's take a look at them now. So these are two different revolvers, but they are very common in many ways. This is the replica of the Smith & Wesson M29, and this is a replica of the Taurus Raging Bull. They're similar in the fact that both of these for a good reason, I'm sure, I replicate the 44 Magnum cartridge. So the cartridges are interchangeable, even the speed loaders I'm using work with both. And they're both similar in function, but each have their specific differences, as do the real guns, and these replicate that properly. So let's open them up. Alright, so they come with similar stuff, they both come with this paper target, who cares. Um, this one comes with a special insert for the cartridge which I noticed is a little different from this but they work interchangeably I have no idea what it says because it's entirely in Japanese and same thing for the menu for the manuals they are both entirely in Japanese so you're basically just going off pictures or you could probably look something up on YouTube but they're pretty self-explanatory for the most part so um, you get the gun you get some BBs and this one also has an Allen wrench little allen wrench tool that you use to adjust the hot pump which you put through here there's a little opening on the top and then you tighten it I think clockwise for more hot pump counterclockwise for less and then same thing with this gun you have for your gun you have some BBs and there's also an allen key here which I'm not sure what that's for it, it goes into the back here of the hammer but I can't figure out what it actually does maybe adjust the tension of the spring uh, really, there's only a small amount. You can turn it before you unscrew it too far and the hammer is no longer able to function because it hits the frame. So I have yet to figure out what that's for, but it does come with that, some BBs, and a nice box. Let's take a look at the revolvers individually. So this is the, the M29 replica. Like I said, it's a shell fed. You push this cylinder release to pop the cylinder out. comes with six shells and you pop a BB on the top and when you fire it the gas basically passes through here pushes the BB out of the shell into the barrel and it fires and as I mentioned the hop ups up here you adjust a little allen screw the gun is supposed to be single double so you should be able to fire it um, both single action and double action but as you can tell by the sound there uh, the double action firing doesn't really work and that's been the case ever since I got the gun and then I thought maybe I wore out the spring same problem on this one so you can't really use the double action mode what happens is um, I don't think the the hammer gets caught far but far enough to the rear to properly release the gas and these are designed to be used with 134 I am using green gas because the FPS was just uh, pretty pretty low with 134 and it wouldn't really function properly so that could be the cause maybe the gas pressure is too much for the the hammer to activate in double action but that's uh, my own experience uh, other than that there's not much to it open the cylinder swap out the shells and then you put it back in again cock the hammer and fire and you can decock it properly the gas fill valve is here hop ups here now the raging bull is very similar it's also single double, but it has the same problem. This one doesn't have gas in it, but when firing it, I noticed the same thing. Double action, BBs just fall out of the barrel. Single action, it fires nicely. Uh, it does have a cylinder release in the same spot, but unlike the M29, you also have to pull down on another release on the front of the cylinder, and it's a little tougher to get it out. But once you get it out, same thing. These dummy 44 Magnum shells, BB on front gas passes through uh, another thing I've noticed with this model the raging bull compared to the M29 if you cock the hammer slowly the cylinder will not rotate all the way and it'll kind of be in this in-between position as you can see and when it is in that position you are not able to fire because the shell is not properly lined up with the barrel so the BB cannot exit and you basically just wasted a shot. So when you cock the hammer, make sure you do it nice and sturdy, then it'll cycle all the way through. Don't kind of weak hand it, it'll get stuck in between. 
Other than that, same operation. This grip is super flimsy. It's kind of coming apart here. You can see a big gap and it doesn't take much to pull it apart. So that's a big minus. It is nice and comfy, but it's very wobbly. The build on these guns is good. They are Japanese, so they're not full metal. That's just not going to happen with a Japanese gun. It seems like the parts that matter, like the hammer and the trigger and the shells, they're metal. So if you drop a shell, you'll be fine. And the parts that actually move will, should be nice and uh, durable for a long time. And if you want a more detailed review to see what I think about this revolver as far as using it in the game, check out my gameplay video because I have used this in the game to with some pretty good success. So uh, I wouldn't recommend this gun for gameplay per se because it's not really beneficial in many ways to even just a gas blowback pistol, forget about a rifle or anything. Especially something like this, it's long, you only have six shots, you have to cock it every time. It's gas powered. It really has almost no advantages. The few advantages it did find with it, because it is long, it does have a long inner barrel, so it is very accurate and it's very quiet. In the middle of a battle, that's going to be almost unnoticeable. If you do um, plan to use the gun in an actual game, I would highly recommend the Speed Loaders by HKS. These are designed specifically for the M29, the real steel, and they work just great with the airsoft version. Pop it in, line it up, get it in there, and then just click right, and they fall right in. And then put your speed loader in a dump pouch or something. But I played with four of these, and one was basically in the gun right off the start, and the other three were in my um, Mac pouches, and it worked out great. So if you're planning on using the game, I think three, three plus one in the gun is a pretty good setup. Uh, as far as FPS, I am using green gas in both of these, the Chrono, right around 300 with green gas, low, 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 high, but that's really good for CQB, and again, I would only recommend using these indoors, outdoors with six shots and limited range, you can have really no chance to even shoot at anyone. So they're really fun guns, they're fun to shoot in the backyard, they're fun in the game because of the unique factor, the cool factor, the intimidation factor. Surprisingly people were kind of intimidated by this thing. I don't know, maybe just the look of it, it looks impressive. But if they knew the function, I don't think they'd be that scared of it. Also, you could get caught reloading because every six shots you're doing it. But check out my gameplay video. I think it explains uh, the whole concept of playing with a revolver in an actual game. You'll see if that's something you want to get into. Uh, as far as these products, I think they're quality products. I don't know if they're really designed to be scrimmaged due to this whole double action thing not working and they're plastic for the most part so they are a little durable there's a few scratches and dents on this one already but it's definitely doable and it's definitely something unique and fun so I hope you guys enjoyed this um, double gun review please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one